You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Cilio: Tales of a Future Dawn, or I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I keep getting the name wrong. But yeah, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while I entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. <clears throat> Well, it heartens me to hear you will. I believe you will do very well indeed. Anyway, what brings the two of you here? I'm buying Diego dinner tonight. <laughs> a reward for his hard work and a celebration of him joining the tournament. Ah, a post-workout dinner. I'll be sure to add more protein. Do not worry, it'll be my treat. Diego began salivating at the thought of additional meat. Shall I take your order, then? Of course, I'll have... Oh. I'll have whatever the author damn well pleases, apparently. Following our meals, Diego and I began our walk home, but decided to stop part way at one of the bridges to let our food settle before we made the rest of the journey. Hey, thanks for dinner, by the way. It's alright, you earned it. And I guess thanks for pushing me to do this. Finding a will to do, well, anything really, has been tough lately. I know, it's been tough seeing you like that. I knew you were hurting even before you told me everything. I just, I wanted to find a way to help you feel better. When Ty suggested the tournament, I was a little skeptical. I didn't know how difficult it would be to get you on board. Lucky, uh, lucky, uh, lucky I'm a sucker for a good workout, huh? You're a total sucker. Ha! <laughs> Shut up! Still, today was fun. I hope we can keep it up. It was. Gotta keep at it if we want to stand a chance at this tournament, right? And if I'm honest, there's nobody I'd rather have as my workout buddy. Same, not that I'm participating, but I'm enjoying myself, and you know I do anything to help you, right? So you say, but you haven't even heard my third condition yet. Huh? Oh, right! That's right, Diego said there were three conditions. I'd only, I'd only heard the first two. Well, do you want to tell me? Yeah, um, I, uh... He cleared his throat. Remember earlier at the sports shop? Yeah. I, uh, brought up you moving out? Yeah, y yeah, that did come up. Diego went silent. I noticed he was looking at his feet, avoiding eye contact. Do you... Do you want me to go? N no! Please! Please don't go! I could see the beginning of tears forming in his eyes as he said it. I suspected this had been something that had been on his mind for a while now. I know he felt. I know how I felt. I know how he felt. I know how I felt. I knew that if I had the choice, I knew if I had the choice, I would stay. There was nowhere else I'd rather be than living with him, than by his side, than with him. I'll stay, as long as you want me to. I, I will. Diego couldn't form the words to respond. I was watching his face intently, so when his hand gently grabbed around mine, I was taken by surprise. Diego sniffled while giving my hand a gentle squeeze. I returned the squeeze, hoping that I would that would speak for itself. It did, as a cheerful smile spread across his face. Despite having known each other for so long, I'd never seen Diego like this, this vulnerable. He was the type to act like a tough guy. His emotions always, always particularly well guarded. We've been best friends for years now, but now I felt like I was beginning to truly understand him, to comprehend the depths of his person and to truly make a connection with him. Not one of his personality, ego, or friendship, but of heart. In that moment, there was nowhere else. There was nowhere I'd rather have been, and nobody would have rather go. Nobody had rather, and nobody I'd have rather been with. It was such a simple moment; it felt magical. And I know Diego felt the same exact way. The two of us sat there for some time, soothed by the sound of the river lapping at the shore below us. Finally, the two of us departed and finished our journey back home to retire for the night. Day nine. The day had commenced with a phone call from Lucas, requesting my help in preparing flyers and other promotional materials. Materials for a fighting tournament that, unsurprisingly, sounded quite familiar to me. I was due to go in shortly, and I was just waiting for breakfast to be done first. Diego was in the kitchen, busily cooking while we sat at the couch, waiting while, waiting while yawning my head off. I hadn't slept well the previous night. I had Diego on my mind constantly. Not that I minded, but I could have done with a few more hours of shut-eye. It was all I could think about, a clear sign that I was in love and the fact that those feelings were mutual made it all the more powerful, or wonderful. It wasn't some ambitious daydream, rather something much more tangible. The previous night was spent imagining scenarios of how things might proceed and of the circumstances that might lead to our first kiss, or perhaps even something else. It was early days yet, but I couldn't help but be excited about what laid ahead. The future seemed bright, and I couldn't, and I couldn't wait to finally experience it. The realization of a crush years in the making. Here we are! Breakfast burgers, just like the ones you make! 
You could place a plate in front of me. Sure enough, he was presented. He has he had presented a near replica of the burgers I've previously made for him. You really like those burgers, don't you? I practically live for them. I don't know mine. I don't know. I think mine are quite as good as yours, though. They look pretty good to me. Besides, seeing as I'm sticking around, there'll be plenty of time to teach you. Yeah, I really look. Oh, excuse me. I really look forward to it. We sat together and shared our meals before I was finally due to leave. You're not doing anything today, right? Nope. It's a day off for me. All right. Well, this doesn't sound like it'll take too long. I'll see you later. Yeah. Looking forward to it. I arrived at Lucas's and immediately got to work. The sooner I began, the sooner I'd finish the re and have the rest of the day to myself. I've been paired with Don this time, using a guillotine of sorts to separate several flyers printed together in a large piece of paper. Eric, meanwhile, was helping Lucas overcome his frustrations with the printer. Paper jam? Why? It was printing fine a second ago. You've got to make sure it's in, it's in straight. It was. Eric opened a flap on the back of the printer and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper before closing the printer again and turning to Lucas. Okay, hit it, handsome. I'll hit you if you keep calling me handsome. Oh, please do. <laughs> Things seem to be largely business as usual between the two. Here's another stack to be cut into quarters. Thanks. I took the stack from Dom and absentmindedly began separating them while lost in my own mind. Hey, so I was wondering. Remember how we found that abandoned building a while back? I do. Axel is really excited to go. He's been pres he's been pressuring me into a he's been pressuring me about it nonstop. So I was thinking if you and Diego were free, maybe you'd like to come along this afternoon. Axel is excited? Really? He seemed really hesitant before. Still, you can count me in. I had been wondering when we were going to get around to that. Great. Can I ask you to invite Diego as well? Sure thing. And I'll bring my famous sandwiches too. So if you need a bargaining chip, Diego will do just about anything when there's food involved. When there's good food involved. I bet he'll come running when he hears there's a sandwich in it for him. He's so incredibly predictable. You're not wrong, but with all the exercise he's doing now, it's going towards a good cause. Oh, is he going to the gym again? Nah, we set up a home. We set up something of a home gym. I held up one of the freshly cut flyers to show Dom. He's participating in this very tournament, actually. Oh, really? That's great. I'll have to come out and watch his fights. I'm sure that'll be re that'll be really good for him too. He's been down in the dumps a bit lately. That's the hope. It's working. Job well done, Eric. We should celebrate. Damn right we should. As he said it, it, I bore witness to the weirdest thing I'd seen all day. Eric, clearly feeling more confident than ever, slapped Lucas right on the backside. Stranger still, Lucas didn't seem to mind one bit. The two of them wandered out of the building, Eric's arm around Lucas's waist as they walked. Huh. What the hell did I miss? Who knows? Anyway, finish cutting those flyers and we can head, our, head on our way. Sounds good. I did his ass before Dom and I made our way towards the, towards the woods, having arranged to meet with Axel and Diego part way. The four of us had arrived at the abandoned building, as Dom had claimed Axel seemed unusually excited about it all. Diego, on the other hand, was absentmindedly munching away on his sandwich. All right, everyone ready? Yep. What about you, Diego? Ready? Uh huh? Diego looked up while chewing a mouthful of sandwich. He politely ordained to swallow his mouthful before he replied. <laughs> oh yeah, ready. Dom approached the door and tried the handle, causing the door to creak ajar. Would you look at that? It's open. Didn't need to bring the drill after all. Dom pushed the door open fully and walked inside with the three of us trailing close behind. Inside was, well, what you'd expect. Dusty, run down, and totally ruined. Light was flooding the room through several holes in the roof, and the floor below our feet showed obvious signs of water damage. Take it easy, guys. Old buildings like this tend to have cellars. Wouldn't want to fall through the floor. The four of us began to explore the building. Axel pushed on ahead with Dom trailing close behind, while Diego and I went off in separate directions, curious as to what secrets the building might, ha might hide. I entered into what was likely an old bedroom. There was a rusty bed frame and several items of broken and watered wooden furniture. My exploration caused me to disturb a thick layer of dust coating the room. I coughed several times before regaining my composure. I had found nothing much of interest in the bedroom, so I returned to the entrance whenever I found Diego already waiting for me. Find anything? Not unless you're in the market for a rusty bed. The best kind. <laughs> Nothing on my end, either. A few old books, uh, melted candles, some graffiti. Hey, if there's graffiti, we can't have- we can't have been here- we can't have been here first, right? I guess so. I was wondering, the last time we came here, the door was locked. Who do you think unlocked it? Diego pondered this for a moment, only to be interrupted by Dom and Axel's return. Hmm. That's one of the cats is running around the room. 
Nothing much on our end. The place has been pretty much stripped. Brian, I was just thinking. Brian was just thinking. Who do you think unlocked the door? Hmm, that's a good point. Well, I'd say this place is a bust. What were you hoping to find, exactly? Something interesting. I don't know exactly what. I explored an old hospital outside of Somerville a few years back. Oh, yeah? The morgue had this big sealed door on it. Someone had etched help me into the metal on the inside. That sounds spooky. I don't think it was anything important. Probably some kids did it to screw with people like us after the place had already closed down. Still, I wish I could have seen it. This wasn't like Axel at all. Anyway, sorry to waste your time with this place. Shall we head on our way? Sure thing. The four of us made our way towards the door towards the doors. All of a sudden. Diego tripped, scaring the hell out of the rest of us. Are you okay? Yeah, but what exactly did I trip on? Looking at where Diego had fallen, I noticed a small bump beneath the moldy old rug. Diego clearly noticed this too as he lifted the rug, revealing a trap door. Aha! I knew there'd be a cellar. Yeah, let's explore. Dom looked at Dom looked at myself and Diego awaited our opinion. I don't see why not. Nope. 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 No. 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 God, that is creepy as hell. An old, broken down, abandoned home with a creepy hidden trap door? Are you kidding me? That is obviously a torture sex dungeon. Come on. <laughs> God, these cats are running. I can hear these cats running around the house. Good lord. Did you guys bring some torches? Nope. Neither did I, honestly. Well, I've got one, and I assume Don pulled out a flashlight of his own. Two lights between the four of us. We'll manage. Diego nodded and lifted the trap door, revealing a small wooden staircase down to a lower level. Axel went down first, followed by Dom. Diego then made his way down, with me taking up the rear. Oh boy. Oh my god! Yep, yep, it's a cult. It's a cult. Run, get out. Below was what appeared to be some kind of dungeon. Despite the upper floor being old, the lower level was clearly much older still, as evidenced by its cobblestone construction and iron braziers. Where, where the hell are we? Jackpot, look at this place. This place has to be hundreds of years old, at least. Ooh. Looks like we've got two paths ahead of us. Axel and I will go right. You guys go. You guys okay to go left? You really think we should be splitting up in a place like this? That's how you get killed in horror movies. Huh. <laughs> Good thing this ain't a horror movie, then. We'll meet you guys back here when we're done on our end, okay? The two of them began making their way down the right-hand passage, all, all the while holding each other's hands. When do you look at that? Maybe we should hold hands, too, huh? What? Feeling scared? Oh, absolutely petrified. I grabbed Diego's hand, which seemed to be some, which seemed to somewhat surprise him. Presumably, he didn't expect me to take his joke seriously. Regardless, it was too good of an opportunity to pass up on. The two of us headed down the left-hand passage with Diego holding a flashlight in his free hand. It was a truly interesting place we'd quite literally stumbled upon. I keep expecting to see a light, to see like a bonfire or something down here. What are you talking about? Heh, <laughs> never mind. <sighs> Hmm. Well, I guess this is as good a time as, as any. Diego pulled out a bottle of spirits from God knows where and began taking swigs. Dude, where the hell did you get that from? A man never tells. Besides, I think like a bit of liquid courage when you're exploring a scary place, right? I shook my head. I was right. Diego really did have a problem. The hallway all the hallway had seemed to stretch a long way into the distance, making it drastically larger than the house had served, had served as its entrance. Given the difference in age between the two, I wondered if the house was built to help can conceal the dungeon. On each side of the path, there were rusty iron barred doors with small rooms behind them. They almost look like... They're cells. Yep. What else could they be? I reckon once upon a time they locked people up in these. How old do you think this place is, anyway? Tom said at least a hundred, at least hundreds of years. Nobody's built anything like this for a long time. Sheesh, just what have we found? Diego's hand pulled away from mine as he wandered over to inspect one of the cells. I shrugged and did the same with the cell opposite, only to find the door locked. I heard the squeak of rusty metal as Diego wandered into the clearly unlocked cell on his side. He took a quick look around inside before returning to me. Nothing. What about over here? He raised his torch and shone it through the iron bars of the door. There were... Bones. Jeez, what do you think these belong to? I took a closer look. I could only deduce they belonged to... Say, don't those look like they came from a person? Canid? Like, us, too? Maybe they're all, maybe they're yours. I've been hankering to get a good look at your bones. <sighs> that was awful. 
Two of us continued down the hall, Diego shining his torch into each cell we passed. Alas, none of the remaining cells contained anything of note. Down the hatch! Diego took several more swigs of his drink before emitting a loud burp that echoed off the cobblestone walls surrounding us. Yeesh! <laughs> he staggered slightly as he said it. He'd gone from sober to alarmingly drunk in short order. Next he, next he turned the bottle upside down, catching the final drops in his mouth before tossing the bottle against the wall to shatter it. He got through an entire bottle of spirits in only a few minutes. I grew dramatically more concerned when he pulled out another bottle, also from God knows where and began drinking from that. Diego, what's gotten into you? Sure, all right? Just a bit of a... Uh, fun, I ain't heard nobody. He finished the entire second bottle right before my eyes, before stumbling and falling to the ground, smashing his flashlight and plunging us into darkness as a result. For several seconds, several seconds went by in absolute silence. D Diego? There was no response. I reached into my pocket and pulled out my cell phone, switching to the light. Not ideal, but I'd have to do. My phone sufficed to light the area immediately before me. What I saw, or perhaps didn't see, caused me concern. Diego was nowhere to be found. D diego w where are you? My voice echoed off the walls of the dungeon, but I heard no response. After a few moments, however, a passageway leading to my right began growing brighter and brighter. Why would Diego run off like that? At, at least he was coming back now that I called him. Brian, is everything okay? Oh, it's you guys. I uh, lost track of Diego. What? But he had the light. I know, he had uh, tripped and it went out. I turned the light on my phone and, well, I can't find him. He can't have gotten far. Let's keep moving forward and hopefully he'll turn up somewhere. We proceeded together past the point where the two paths had converged. Beyond lay several more cells with nothing of note until we reached the end, where there was a large wooden door standing slightly ajar. The silent nod between the three of us, we opened the door and entered the room that lay beyond. What the fuck? What we found within was shocking, to say the least. It was some kind of torture and execution chamber. It was one of those old racks they stretched people in. A guillotine, several other implements I did not recognize, and in the middle of the room... An Iron Maiden. What the hell? Awesome! <laughs> Axel, what the fuck is wrong with you? I approached the maiden and attempted to pry it open. Alas, it wouldn't budge, no matter how hard I pulled. What are you doing? I don't think we should hang around here. I know, I'm just... Oh, no. No! What is it? Dom peeked through the window and fell backwards to the floor with a cry. He'd seen what I'd seen. Diego was within, and the spikes were very much still present. It's high time we left this place. You would want to meet the one responsible for this. What? But what about Diego? It comes. But, but... A shadow began to coalesce in the corner of the room before emitting a terrifying roar. Oh, shit. Guys, what the fuck have we walked into? Run! Oh my god. Oh my god, okay, that's as good a place as any to pause it. Holy shit. What the fuck did we walk into? What is happening? What is it with furry visual novels and turning into horror games? Uh-uh. Nope, no, 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 no. Nope, I, I think I know what's going on. Yep, I think I know what's going on. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save my opinion. I'm gonna save my opinion for the next episode, just to see if I'm right. All right. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!